Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Rosh Hashanah literally means head of the year, the new year. But biblically, it's much more than that. In the book of Leviticus, it's called Yom Teruah, the day of the blowing of trumpets or ram's horn, the judgment day. The only commandment during Rosh Hashanah is actually to hear the sound of the shofar. Okay. And so everybody gathering in the synagogue to hear the sound of the shofar. It's something that people connect to their soul to hear the sound of the shofar. The piercing sound of the shofar is meant to remind the hearers to repent of their sins and to make things right with their brothers and sisters. The rabbis say that reconciliation with God and man confounds the enemy. A shofar is a musical instrument made from a horn. This is the oldest uh, musical instrument. And the Jewish Orthodox who have a committee to hear the sound of the shofar during the uh, New Year. The, our uh, ju judgment day. As part of a two-family business, Eli Rebach is a third-generation shofar maker. The process is uh, poly grinding, polishing, then we open a mouthpiece. This is a uh, quick, but it's a lot of experience and a lot of hand uh, work because each horn is a different size, different thickness, so you have to be experienced to make a good shofar. The ram's horn is used as the traditional shofar because when Abraham showed his willingness to sacrifice his son Isaac, God provided a ram to be used in his place. It's actually, all type of horns are kosher except of a cow. That's because the Jewish people don't want to remind God of the time Israel worshipped the golden calf in the wilderness. Besides the distinctive tones of the different horns, there are three different blasts sounded. The shofar is blown in synagogues and at the Western Wall each morning for a month before the holiday to give plenty of time for repentance. You and I both know that uh, we need a lot of reminders in our daily life to repent, to think of the things of God. It's like an alarm clock for the soul. Reebok says it's not just Jewish people who blow the shofar. We sell the shofar all over the world. We sell it to Jewish, to Christian, uh, messianic people, evangelist people. Rosh Hashanah is the feast of the seventh month, but in Jewish tradition represents the new year. At the coronation of the kings of Israel, the shofars would blow. They would announce the new king or they would announce the coming of the king. Oftentimes in the Christian world, shofars are blown throughout the entire year. But in Judaism and in Jewish practice, the shofars are only blown for a very limited time throughout the year, during this time, the month of Elul and Rosh Hashanah. Boaz Michael, founder of First Fruits of Zion, says that's a foreshadow for those who believe in Yeshua, Jesus. And they tell us something, they're speaking to us, they're reminding us of something. And one of the things they're reminding us of is the creation of the world, the coming of the King, King Messiah one day at this time, uh, the coronation of his kingdom here on earth. This is what the shofar is to remind us of and it's, it speaks to us every day when we hear that sound. Will the rapture of the church take place on Rosh Hashanah 2023, which begins at sundown on Friday, September 15th, and ends at sundown on Sunday, September 17th? The Jewish prophet Amos records that God declared he would do nothing without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. From the Old Covenant to the New, Genesis to Revelation, God provides picture after picture of his entire plan for mankind, and one of the most startling prophetic pictures is outlined for us in the Jewish feasts of Leviticus 23. The Hebrew word for feasts, moed, literally means appointed times. God has carefully planned and orchestrated the timing and sequence of each of these seven feasts to reveal to us a special story. 
the seven annual feasts of Israel were spread over seven months of the Jewish calendar at set times appointed by God. They are still celebrated by observant Jews today. But for both Jews and non-Jews who have placed their faith in Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, these special days demonstrate the work of redemption through God's Son. The first four of the seven feasts occur during the springtime. These are Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and Weeks, and they all have already been fulfilled by Christ in the New Testament. The final three feasts, Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles occur during the fall, all within a short 15-day period. Many Bible scholars and commentators believe that these fall feasts have not yet been fulfilled by Jesus. However, the blessed hope for all believers in Jesus Christ is that they most assuredly will be fulfilled. As the four spring feasts were fulfilled literally and right on the actual feast day in connection with Christ's first coming, these three fall feasts, is believed by many, will likewise be fulfilled literally in connection to the Lord's second coming. In a nutshell, here is the prophetic significance of each of the seven Levitical feasts of Israel. Passover pointed to the Messiah as our Passover lamb, whose blood would be shed for our sins. Jesus was crucified on the day of preparation for the Passover, at the same hour that the lambs were being slaughtered for the Passover meal that evening. Unleavened bread, pointing to the Messiah's sinless life, as leaven is a picture of sin in the Bible, making him the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Jesus' body was in the grave during the first days of this feast, like a kernel of wheat planted and waiting to burst forth as the bread of life, first fruits, pointing to the Messiah's resurrection as the first fruits of the righteous. Jesus was resurrected on this very day, which is one of the reasons that Paul refers to him in 1 Corinthians 15:20 as the first fruits from the dead. Weeks or Pentecost occurred 50 days after the beginning of the feast of unleavened bread, and pointed to the great harvest of souls and the gift of the Holy Spirit for both Jew and Gentile who would be brought into the kingdom of God during the church age. The church was actually established on this day when God poured out his Holy Spirit and 3,000 Jews responded to Peter's great sermon and his first proclamation of the gospel. Trumpets, the first of the fall feasts. Many believe this day points to the rapture of the church when the Messiah, Jesus, will appear in the heavens as he comes for his bride, the church. The rapture is always associated in scripture with the blowing of a loud trumpet as we read in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, 51, and 52. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain should be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The Feast of Trumpets is also referred to as the Feast of the New Moon, for it is the only annual feast of God that commences with the lunar sign from the heavens. In ancient times, Jewish religious authorities had to wait until the new moon was actually seen by reliable witnesses. Before the month's activities could begin, the appointed time is stretched into two days, as no man knoweth the day or the hour. Thus, the authorities did not know when the Feast of Trumpets would actually commence. They did not know the day or hour. Jesus Christ made specific reference to this fact when he spoke of the time he would fulfill his promise to return. He said no one knows about that day or hour. It is the only feast day that is named as such because they just didn't know which day was the correct day. Why two days? It is because of the uncertainty of when to declare the day, because the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets is based on the sighting of the first visible crescent of the new moon. And since the days counted are from the new moon to the next, no one is sure if it's the 29th or the 30th day of the month, so to be sure, they count both. During the feast, the trumpet is blown a total of 100 times, with the final horn blast lasting much longer than the first 99 blasts. This final blast pictures the trumpet sound, which many believe will announce the rapture of the church, which Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. Disclaimer. I make no prediction of the Lord's return, as we cannot know the exact timing, but I am referencing scripture 
that gives us the information that points to a specific set of days as clues in his word. Day of Atonement Many believe this prophetically points to the day of the second coming of Jesus when he will return to earth, tabernacles, or booths. Many scholars believe that this feast day points to the Lord's promise that he will once again tabernacle with his people when he returns to reign over all the world. Many scholars believe the rapture will occur on the Feast of Trumpets. We are to be watching as Jesus commands us in Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. No matter what happens or doesn't happen on this upcoming Feast of Trumpets, we are to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Hebrews 12.2 Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Are your eyes fixed on Jesus? He is returning. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.